I've lived around Lansing for almost 40 years, yet I've never visited Potter Park Zoo. As you can see, I have no qualms about allowing domesticated animals to take over my own home. But I really do question the ethics of putting wild animals in confined spaces just so we can stare at them. Yet I found myself going to the zoo the other day to see if our new millage has succeeded in turning the place around. First, the good news. Potter Park Zoo is clean though it does seem odd they leave ladders and tools lying around. But I was perturbed to see a brown paper bag cluttering the meerkat's pen. And why aren't there any bins marked for recycling? But at least the animals the size of these meerkats seem to be relatively happy, though this little guy has a thousand-yard stare. The spider monkeys seem to be doing okay. Domesticated animals like the llamas seem to be doing fine. Maybe even the big but docile animals like the Bactrian camels and the bongo are doing okay in the habitats that they're provided. But happiest of all are these rias running free. A sharp contrast to the eagles. But I felt really sad for the Patagonian hare. He seems to have enough space, but not only does he have these tags bolted in his ears that remind him he's not in the wild, but he just sat there in his open space with nowhere to go. I worry that his little heart is beating like a drum, wondering if there's some place he could hide or flee. I also hear their plans to bring in a rhino. But based on the size of this enclosure, all I can ask is why? Why not tear down some of these empty cages to give the animals that already live there enough room? Most disturbing were the tiny habitats for the animals that loved to roam. This Bengal tiger kept pacing relentlessly, breaking my heart. These two gorgeous snow leopards did the same. The one cat looked up, hoping to find a place to jump, but no. I could feel his fury. Being in these small places is killing their spirit as well as their bodies. The best argument for a zoo is that it helps kids appreciate wild animals. Maybe if they see them, they'll take action to save endangered species. But when I was taking these pictures of these snow leopards, two teenage boys came by to taunt them, calling them stinky. A few dirty looks for me and they left, but where are the security guards? Horror stories from the past at Potter Park remind us that it's our responsibility to keep these animals safe. I also hear their plans to bring in another wolf, but the one they have isn't all that happy, and as I was leaving, one of the two white arctic foxes woke up from a nap and started pacing and pacing and pacing, wearing a groove into the soil. Maybe the iron giraffes are the lucky ones. As I left the park and headed to the car, I saw some Canada geese down by the river. If I had young children, I'd rather have them see these animals living free. That's why it wounds me that I hear the park recently paved the parking lot without putting in a retention pond. The runoff from that parking lot may well be poisoning the habitat these friendly geese depend on. To my mind, the park has an obligation to the wildlife inside and outside its walls. My bottom line, if we can't do better, maybe we should tear it down.